When I started out making these pictures, I was so interested in the idea of infinity and going all the way to infinity. I did a few pointed ones that went to uh, infinity. But infinity is a little bit further than people will go, I think. It, um, people didn't quite like to go that far. They prefer to see light at the end of the tunnel, if you like. Because nobody ever goes there, you know, nobody's been to infinity and come back anyway. When I'm making pictures, I'm not making them for myself. I'm, I'm making them um, for other people. I think that when I leave the studio in the evening, they all just sit there, dull lumps of painted wood. And it's only when I open the door again that they come to life. I think they only come to life when they're seen. The irony is that uh, making these things that stick out a foot into the air and that so clearly are not uh, spatial illusions from where you're looking, is that they are the strongest spatial illusions. They're stronger than if they were flat. And that's because the power of our minds that sends them back. My saw and my glue sticks them out, but your eyes and your minds send them back. What I'm doing now, just I'm just filling in uh, uh, low lights and high lights on some planking, and every little plank is um, another plank in the uh, coffin, as it were, of the observer. Every time I draw a line like this with a highlight, it leads your eye back, and all these planks, you now 40 or 50 planks, as they're added, will drive you and pull you and suck you back into my web. When I finally finished it to my satisfaction, I frame it up myself in that very simple way. And then it's finished, but it goes on to live a life kicking around the studio, see it in different exhibitions, see it in different lighting, maybe sell it, and it, it then is appreciated by people, and it then has a life of its own, and it leaves home, grows up, and gets a job. I sometimes try to introduce an element of, shall we say, wit or poetry into my work because that's where I'm coming from. I am, at bottom, a, a surrealist. Mondrian is obviously a good guy to um, impersonate in perspective because he's, uh, they're all linear anyway. And it's a way of saying Mondrian is aiming to be perfect but this isn't a perfect world. You may see a Mondrian from the side. And he can't legislate for that. He can make it as square as he likes. But when you're looking at it from the side, it's in perspective. The further things are away from you, the smaller they seem to be. Books and bookshelves look small when they're in the distance and big when they're right up close. In this picture, I've applied that simple principle to presence of windows and houses and floors to everything. As things go further away, they seem to be smaller. But what I've done is I've reversed this principle. I've made the big things far away, and the little things close up. Now when the viewer comes along to complete the picture, he or she looks at it, they do a kind of dance from left to right. So when someone's looking at these pictures, trying to accommodate this contradictory information, as they move to the left, the whole picture seems to be moving to the right. 
and vice versa. If they move to the right, the whole picture seems to be moving to the left. And again, similarly, when you go right down, you've gone right up in the world, and as you go back up, it's as if you were going down. I first saw people looking at my pictures in numbers at art fairs, and that was extraordinary to see them, three or four or five people deep, moving and ooing and aahing the way they do. And then I began to see what a um, tremendous effect it had on people and how, uh, how powerful it was for all, all kinds of people from all over the place. And it's a super thrill for me to see them ever, to just make them in the studio, just more or less on my own, to see uh, lots of people hundreds I've seen, thousands I suppose, looking at that. It's very exciting. Thank you.